we're so busy as coaches trying to help everybody else. I think sometimes there's a realisation that you, you can't do everything or be everything for everyone and you need either that support network around you or people around you. Today we're joined by Vicky Fisher to chat about the importance of maintaining your well-being as a coach. We want our players to be happy and to love it. We want there to be an open process where players can talk to coaches and vice versa. And if we get that bit right, actually it probably takes the pressure off a little bit of match day. Do you have any tips for, you know, if someone doesn't feel like they've got a support network around them, where they might find those people? Yeah, I think... Hello and welcome to Coach Cash by England Football Learning, the coaching podcast that brings you insight from people across the game. As always, I'm Jamie and I'm with Louise and today we're joined by Vicky Fisher, an FA Coach Development Officer who's returning to Coach Cash to chat about the importance of maintaining your well-being as a coach. Well, hi Vicky, welcome back to the show. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. It's really nice to see you both. Yeah, really yeah. nice to see you and have you back here again. Just for anybody who hasn't heard you on an episode before, can you just give us a recap of what it is that you do at the FA? Yeah, so I am a, an FA regional coach developer. Um, I work across the Southwest region and essentially our job is to help coaches with a specific focus on female coaches. So how do we encourage and support female coaches in the game? Fabulous. Brilliant. Well, once again, fantastic for for that. But just before we jump into the main part of the show, as you know, as this is a coaching podcast, coaches could be on the way to training right now. So we always like to give them some good advice at the top of the show. Yep. So as usual, this is your arrival activity. Warm you up a little bit, (laughs) get you into the zone. We're going to ask you to give us as many top coaching tips as you can in 30 seconds. You up for that challenge? Always up for a challenge. Okay, (laughs) great. Well, when the music starts, you can begin. Real. So some of my top tips would be use your players as much as possible. So as coaches, we feel we have to do everything. Our, our players can help us set up sessions. Our players can help make decisions in sessions. Our players can help take some of the responsibility away from us. So engage with your players, use your players and get them involved in, in the process, however big or, or small that might be. Um, probably not 30 seconds, but that's my top tip. Oh, right. look at that. I think uh, that's a really good top tip. But also it spans, doesn't it? Yeah, All the things you absolutely. can try with it. Fab. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, we'll dive into to the main part of the show, Vicky. And, well, it is your third time on Coach Cast now. You're as experienced as we are at doing this. <laughs> um, so a hat-trick of appearances, but it has been a little while since you've been on the show. So how have you been since the last time that we've we've been chatting? It's been as busy as ever. The world of football never stops, does it? So, um, yeah, Job-wise, busy supporting coaches, meeting new coaches. Um, We've had some fantastic events across the region, so, you know, that's really exciting. And then on a personal level, completed another season of grassroots football, which which we know is is challenging and tough, but also I think, you know, when you get to the end of the season, it's also really rewarding. So, yeah, get ready to go for another season. So, yeah, personally, professionally, like another season on the pitch. Yeah, fantastic. Have you um, had any kind of interesting bits of advice or different things that have cropped up that maybe have changed the way that you approach coaching at all do you know i think a lot of it links to to what i've just said spoke about in the top tips around you know i think sometimes as coaches we feel we have to do everything ourselves you know it can be a really tough lonely world sometimes um and i think embracing others so whether that's you know fellow coaches or like say players sometimes i think we forget it's their game you know i guess our job is to is to help make the game happen, but it's it's their game and they're the ones on the pitch. So yeah, look, we're always learning. Like I'm learning. Um, I work with coaches who are learning, and it's it's a it's a good, healthy place to be to to reflect and try things. And what sort of you mentioned some events that you've been working on um, since the last time that we spoke. Uh, do you want to give us a bit of an insight into into what they might have been like? A little bit of a highlight recap, really. So a real big focus is on you know how can we support and encourage, encourage more females to get into coaching, and, and really important like, how do we keep them when they've they've stepped over that line and and have started their journeys. So um, we've made real steps um, across our County FA network around the country that that every County FA is is pretty much offering coaching sessions, workshops, development groups for female coaches. You know, that's that's really significant. So, you know, and within them, then there's some amazing events. You know, each county is different and runs events that are right for them. So, yeah, for me, it's a real privilege to be able to go out and meet people locally and, and just to be part of that process. It's been really nice seeing that grow as a as a uh, project as well. Yeah, massively. You know, from where we were three years ago, where where we didn't have any of this, to then you know bit by bit each year seeing more grow to now, like I say, pretty much wherever you are in the country, you can you can access an opportunity. Like it's really important. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's really nice to to hear about 
hear about that growth, like some really good piece of work that's been going on. In terms of, you mentioned grassroots football, another season. Um, what sort of uh, learnings have you taken away from the season that's just finished then? Probably linked really nicely to, to, to the podcast today and the episode around the well-being piece and um, can't do everything on our own. It's tough sometimes. You're, you're always trying to keep so many different people happy. <laughs> and I think sometimes there's a realisation that you, you can't do everything or be everything for everyone and you need either that support network around you or people around you. Um, and for me, it's been very much around, like I say, sh sharing the workload, um, sharing responsibilities and, and trusting and empowering other people. It's not always easy as a coach, like I say, though, to, to, to let go of some bits sometimes. Um, but I think, you know, to, to be the best version of yourself and, and to look after yourself and those around you, sometimes you have to. Brilliant. Well, you mentioned there that we are here to talk about well-being uh, as a coach. Um, I suppose looking back at your journey from, uh, I believe it was, was it Mrs. Jones? I think it was that 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 helped you with the uh, get onto the level one course to to today. So looking at your journey, what does well-being mean to you when you reflect on on some of the key part, parts of your your journey so far? Yeah, it was Mrs. Jones. That's yes. a great great memory. <laughs> um, I think well-being is around. And like essentially how how would you feel in yourself like and i think i say it quite often try, trying to be the best version of yourself and at any moment in time there are so many different things that can impact that just like the can like everyone around us you know we always say you never know what anybody else is going through on that day so for me well-being is around like say how am i feeling and what's probably affecting how i'm feeling um, and there's probably some things that we can control and some things that we can't control so for me a lot of it's around now controlling the things we can control and like owning that part and accepting there's stuff like say that that you can't but that you can still recognize and respond to and probably deal with and i suppose if we think about it in terms of mental health how important is it to keep on top of that do you think so important you know and we hear it and we see it all around us now but it's not always as easy probably to to recognize in ourselves perhaps or start to talk about or, or even share. So even actually, if we do recognize that we might be struggling or we might not be feeling that great, where do you go with that? Or who do you turn to or who's your support network or who do you feel comfortable with? Like say, probably maybe opening up to. Again, if we link it to football, yeah, football can be tough sometimes. You know, if you're the one at the front making decisions or people are relying on you. When we talk to mental health, I think talk about mental health, I think sometimes there could be this fear of weakness or vulnerability or, um, you know, letting your, your guard down almost. And um, if we don't look after ourselves, we're not going to be able to look after the players or, or anyone else around us. So, it, it, like, it has a knock-on effect on it all. And I guess it's one of those things, isn't it? You Once you start opening up, you realise it's not just you. A lot of people feel the same and it's kind of, it's really important to build that, being able to be open about it with you, with other people, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. We talk all the time and, and, and I totally appreciate it. Probably don't recognise it, and it's not the reason why people coach. But, but our coaches are role models mm. to those around. I say it often to, to the coaches I work with. You know, nobody gets up every morning and thinks, "Oh, I'm a role model today." You know, you get up and, and be the best version of yourself and and help everybody. But, but as coaches or, or managers, or whatever role you play, it's like it's a really entrusted position that is respected. And and like I say, it you become a leader, and and people take notice. Like what things could happen if someone isn't or if a coach isn't taking care of their mental health? I think that's hard because I think it's personal to everybody. You yeah. know, a, a, every single one of us is different. I think you know yourself, how you're feeling. And, you know, we have good days and we have bad days and things happen that might affect us, um, like I say, on and off the pitch. Mm -hmm. I think it's when you start to have those feelings more regularly, you know, actually, do you know what? Something isn't right here. Um and then how does, can that affect us longer term? Well, it's probably going to have a negative impact on our life. You know, how we go about things, how much interest we take in things. When we're in a position where we're trying to look after other people, if if we can't look after ourselves or we're struggling to look after ourselves, it then becomes, like I say, really hard to, to look after others. And again, that, you're probably going to have an impact on them in, in, a, in a way that you're not, you don't want to have. And that's really tough because you're trying to do the right things because you don't want to let anybody yeah. down. You're doing it because you want to keep going and, and like I say, n not let anybody down. But, but at some point, actually, we've got to stop and look after ourselves first. If you don't mind uh, us asking anyway, what sort of things 
can affect your mental health. I'm trying to think if anybody that's listening, if there's something that maybe resonates with one of the listeners, what kind of things to look out for that could affect mental health of coaches, really? Coaching can feel like a lot of pressure, like a lot of pressure. And, and whether you coach young people or adults, um, there are always, always so many people looking at you to make decisions. Football's a game of opinions as well. So one day you could be the best person in the world, you could be the best coach, you know, and the next day um, somebody could have a totally different opinion on you. So in terms of your own mental health, that could be really difficult, like really difficult to know where you stand and how you feel and how people's opinions of you might change, even though that you're just being you and being really consistent. But like I say, I think it's so individual to everyone. And I think you only you will recognise those feelings that you have. And, and it's not the same. So one person's experience won't be the same as, as somebody else's. We're all really passionate about football. Like everybody steps on the pitch to try and win the game. And it always feels rubbish, actually, if you don't get the result that you want, depending on the level of the game that you work in, for example, youth football or, or, or you know, development football. Actually, the performance might be more important than the win. But actually, the people standing on the sides might not understand that or recognise that. So from a coaching view, actually, you might be really proud of your team's performance that day because they might not have won the game, but they might have actually done loads of the great stuff that you've been working on. But for other people sitting in the stands or on the side of the pitch who are disappointed that you haven't won, like, it's a different agenda. Like it's a different mindset. It's like, say, how, how do you level that out in terms of how you're feeling and what they're feeling and, and thinking and how do you not let that perhaps affect you? Do you have any, again, it, it, as you mentioned, it, it is kind of different for, for everybody. So I'm not saying like there's, there's an easy way to, to to be able to improve mental health or anything. But do you have any top tips for helping coaches maybe deal with that pressure from your experience in, in grassroots football with that pressure? Uh, like how, is there any top tips that you can, can kind of be in control of that? I think, you know, again, it's so easy to say, but surround yourself with good people. So quite often we don't coach on our own. Like we, we often coach in teams or pairs, or you might have a, a coach and an assistant or, you know, several people. You know, they, those people are your allies, like they're your go-tos. So whether that's, you know, from planning your session each week to talking about the game, you know, they're, they're sharing the same experiences or similar experiences to you. So they're a really good place to turn to, you know, for the good times and the not so good times. Because actually, again, you know, say it, sometimes we don't know how other people are feeling. So by having that conversation, actually, it might be, do you know what, actually, I feel like this. And Jamie, you might be feeling really similar, but we, we've never actually openly said it so I think having good people around you also you know in coaching we often talk about like the plan do review process like we we plan our session we do it and we review it and I'm not sure how often we do the review part in life or share that and I think that review or that reflection can be really important in terms of how we feel about things so actually this situation has happened do we just stop and move on and ignore it or do we reflect and think about it and spend some time to be able to then move on so it doesn't affect us like and whether that's you know me as an individual just driving in my car thinking about what might have happened in the session or the match or me sharing those thoughts with a, another coach but um like i said i'm not sure sometimes that we give ourselves the time opportunity because life's busy like there was almost so much to do but i think that review and reflection piece allows us to like say either process decompress share stuff um but like I say, almost say move on sometimes. Mm -hmm. I think as well, that kind of review and talking about it with someone else almost like stops it from being such a big thing in your own head. It kind of dispersed, like breaks it down a little bit and yeah. makes no, it more absolutely. manageable. Yeah, I totally agree. In the past, has there ever been a challenge that you've faced that's impacted your well-being personally? And if so, how did you overcome that? Yeah, I could write. I could write a book. I feel. <laughs> um, but again, I think that's probably normal life that we think all oh, this stuff only happens to us and not other people. Personally, like I've had huge challenges along the way. You know, from bereavement of family members and and the impact that's had to just again the realities of being a grassroots football coach and trying to be everything for everybody. You know, there's times during the season where. But probably I've really struggled. You know, I do a job that I love and I'm always trying to help people spend a lot of time away from home. Um, and it's that reality of I can't be there for everything. Um, so I need to trust those around me, um, respect those around me and almost allow people to help me and, and not try and be the, the superhero that can do everything. 
Um, but that's not easy. So yeah, that's been a, probably a, a real big lesson for myself this year, but a really like probably valuable one that will affect, you know, like lots of different parts of my life, not just football. How easy was it like in terms of to get people on board to come and come and help out? Easy in terms of like, were they willing to come, come and help at all? Or was it that a little bit of challenge at all? I would say a mixture of both. Easy in the sense that, that I was already coaching and working with other people. So that was great. But probably a big part was understanding different people's motivations. So like, what was their why for being there? So my why is because I love football and I want to make a difference to those people that I work with. And to be able to do that in my hometown is you know, really exciting for me. Um, but everybody has their own story or their own why or their own reason. And that's really important. And, and I'm not sure we always take the time to understand that. You know, yes, we're coaches, but we have our own motivations. So those motivations could be totally different for different people in different settings. Like it could be for coaches that are like are aspirational coaches that want to get a career in the game. So they might want a coach to get different experiences. They might be coaching because their child plays. And yeah, they, they do want to coach, but they're doing it to make sure their child has an opportunity to play and, um, you know, to make sure there's opportunities for them. And that's just two, you know, there's loads, you know, there's loads more. Um, it might be like, say, you know, players who are transitioning from playing and, and starting to coach to give stuff back. So for me, the first bit was around, actually, I've got these great people around me, but what's their motivations? Because that will probably affect what they're able to give or help or support with, or will offer different viewpoints on things. So again, whereas you might just think you don't agree with somebody, actually, like what, what like what's the angle they're coming at, fr like from it? Because that will tell you their reasoning. And actually that changes the narrative sometimes. Like it can go from, why are you saying that? I don't agree with you. Oh, actually, yeah, okay. I understand why you're saying that and you know, what, like what your viewpoint is. Yeah, no, the, the reason for asking is just like, it's uh, j just almost like, uh, it's interesting just to see in terms of like, we say um, a lot of times like trying to get other people to, to help, but just interesting hearing like personal stories in terms of how difficult or easy is it actually to get help. But you made a really good point there in terms of we always talk about um, understanding the importance of understanding players. You, you know what what are their motivations? It's the same with coaches, with parents, anybody that's helping out, understanding their motivations because that's going to impact the way that they behave. And also ultimately coming back to the topic of today is their is their well being as well. So it's just really un important just to understand each other to to really help. Uh, with everybody's well-being as well isn't it yeah i just think like I say we're, we're so busy as coaches trying to help everybody else that we perhaps don't always take the time to find out about each other or the people we even work with you know we we turn up at sessions we have plans you know you know what you're doing but you know what about like I say beyond that um and i think it can make a really big difference what are some of the challenges that coaches could face at training do you think I think, <laughs> again, I, I, just, I think there could be so many and I think it could be so different. I think coaches are really busy people and we're trying to fit lots in. So, you know, as coaches, you want to always want to go and deliver your best session. Like you want your sessions to be good. You want your players to love being at football and you want your sessions like to reflect that. And, you know, those days sometimes where things just don't go quite right. And it might not be because you haven't planned it because you've done the plan and but for whatever reason the session just doesn't work like that can be tough like and that piece where we said about well actually do you actually reflect and review and use it to move on so but there's also so many factors we said it earlier like we've got the factors in our control but we've got the factors outside of our control like the number of times you might have planned a brilliant session and the players come in and for whatever reason like the players might have had their own bad days or struggles there's other things that you could have injuries in your session you know it's it's always really difficult. There's been a couple of times in my, you know, in my career where, you know, we've had a training session or a match where actually there's been a really serious injury or incident that's happened in it. Like that just changes everything in that moment. You know, everything that you've planned for everything, you know, you, you imagine how your evening or your day is going to go. And in that moment, like I say, everything changes, you know, having to be a coach that makes a 999 call for an ambulance. There are so many different variables that can happen in any moment from, like I say, your session, not just going to how you wanted it to to potentially a serious accident or an injury. And it's, you said it from the start, being able to control the things that you can control, having good people around you. And I'm probably like, yeah, I've, said it, I've said it quite often, like being consistent for your players. So your players kind of know how you're doing. And actually sometimes actually, you know, if you're not doing so well, because players can sometimes help take some of the pressure off of you as well. Um, 
said it in the top tips, you know, you don't have to do everything. Like, y- your players are so capable. Sometimes they can be great to take the pressure off of you in, in moments. And would you say there's any other um, different challenges that would come up on match day, perhaps? Or... Yeah, match day's different again, isn't yeah. it? Um, we, we've said it. Football's often a game of opinions, isn't mm. it? And uh, as a coach, your opinion on the game can be can be very different to those watching. You've got the dynamic, obviously, of of spectators. So whether that's in youth or adult football, people will come with a different interest. You know, pe- people like to 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 see the results in the game. You also got the dynamic of players, haven't you? You know, how, how do you how do you keep your players happy and, and, and loving the game and how do you deal with conflict sometimes? How do you manage difficult conversations? How do you have the conversation that actually, you know, you might not be starting today, but you're, you're going to start on the, on the bench, but I know you can make a difference. And again, you know, when we talk about mental health, you can spend so much time as a coach worrying about how you're going to deliver that information that almost by the time it gets there, it, you know, that could have been what you've built yourself up on and, and not even the game. So as a coach, you've got so many different things that you've always got to be thinking about and preparing for and planning for. And, you know, sometimes it's just about going and having a go at stuff. Sometimes we can spend so much time worrying about something. We almost just need to to do it, to know what it's like or feels like, to even learn, actually, I'm not going to do that next time. Uh, I'm going to do it this way next time. Um, but match day obviously brings different challenges to, to training. You mentioned a really good point there in terms of like, almost like you could be worrying about everybody else's well-being as well like and and i was going to actually ask in terms of how you could potentially manage that in the scenario uh, but you provided a really good example there in terms of like saying to to a substitute for instance they might be absolutely gutted about missing out but the way that you phrased it there was like don't worry like you're going to get your chance sort of thing and it's like you're a game changer sort of thing like and almost like reassuring them and it kind of changes the narrative a little bit doesn't it yeah, absolutely. And I think that's what I say as a, as a coach, you know, you, you've got to know your players. So, you know, some players will receive that information better than others. But I think a lot of that links to the environment that you, you create anyway, you know, your players, you know, you being consistent with your players and them knowing, you know, what to expect from you, how you're going to give that information. We talk quite often about, you know, creating a training environment where players want to go to. So uh, I've probably said it before, often we have a culture where, you know, oh, if you... If you don't train, you don't play. Like we, we want to create an environment where actually we just want players to love coming to training. Like it's not a, like a like a bribery. Like we, we want them just to love coming to training session because they love being there. Whether that's because it's social and they get to see their teammates, whether it's because, you know, they, they want to keep learning and developing. But at, like as a coach and again, like that well-being piece, like we want our players to be happy and to love it. We want there to be a like an open process where players can talk to coaches and like vice versa for coaches to be able to talk with players. And if we get that bit right, actually it probably takes the pressure off a little bit of match day because the conversations will always be challenging because like I say, players just want to play football. Every single player wants to get there, put their kit on and get on the pitch. But the reality is you only, you know, in in the adult game, 11 players can start, you know, new football be left. So it's, you know, how do we deliver those messages? How is it consistent? How do we deliver it so that we don't worry about it as coaches or or makes us really anxious or nervous? Because like I say, that's just one tiny component of what's going to happen in that day. One of the phrases that you've used a couple of times um, on this podcast is um, controlling the controllables. Um, Out of interest, like... So I'm trying to think of what could help coaches potentially reduce a little bit of pressure. So please correct me if I'm if I'm wrong. You don't have to agree with this at all. Um, but is it possible that if you almost like maybe redefine what success is for, for for the day almost like, or you've got certain values that you just want to to achieve on match day, would that help handle sort of expectations, the pressure, and maybe improve well being at all? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think yeah, I've said it before. You know, as coaches probably we're looking for different things on the sideline than the people standing on the sidelines <laughs> and watching so being able to define what success is in that moment and, and that could be anything that could be success for an individual that could be success for the team we talk quite often about performance over results so actually like if you've been working on something and training and they then go and do it in the game as a coach that's like that's the best feeling and when the players start to recognize that as well we like as an example we um we've been working on some defending defending stuff and we were talking around actually success isn't always making that big tackle. Success might be actually our team shape is really good. So it means that we can put pressure on and then we can intercept the ball. So we win the ball back. So it's the players understanding what, what success looks like. And then us probably praising and recognising it when it 
happened. So no, we're not celebrating because we scored a goal, but actually we're, we're praising and recognising, actually, do you know what, your shape was fantastic then. We pressed and then we were able to regain. And in that moment, that really helps our, our players. I think in some areas of the game, there's a real opportunity to share those like success measures with our parents. So if we're coaching youth football, actually there's no harm in saying to, to the parents, like, this is what we're working on in training. Like, these are things that we're trying to watch out for in the game. Like, and if you see it, actually, like, you know, give the players a clap or shape the conversations in the car on the way home, like around those things. And we almost reframe sometimes what we're going after. But again, as coaches, we've got to be brave to, to share that with those, what, you know, I say it all the time, we're trying to do everything ourselves. Can we try and share some of it and take people on the journey with us so it's not just us trying to do everything? And I think it would like having that interaction with the parents and they, if, the, if they're on board with that, then it really helps to build the journey of like success and kind of where they're going and all of the little bits that go into it, not the kind of just the winning or goals or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, control of the controllables is about like, how can you just make your life as easy as possible as a match day? Because there was, there's almost so much extra stuff that you end up just having to do. So, um, you know, I, I say I say it all the time, but it, like involve the players. So actually, if you've got pitches that help, like need setting up, even if it's corner flags, mm. like players can help do other jobs as well. Um, that's one thing then that you don't have to be worrying about, you know, your team lineups or your substitutions. How much can you plan in advance? So you're not standing on the sideline then trying to juggle and do everything because that's pressure and that's really tough. Your key outcomes of the day, you know, what three things are you going after? Like, can you plan it and tell your players in your team talk? So... It's almost like, like I say, because that moment that the whistle blows and you're on the touchline, there's there's so much to think about. I think it's really easy for coaches to say to feel like feel that pressure and it, and, and it can be tough. Yeah, that's it. It's really important just to try and open your mind a little bit to go, we can delegate some responsibilities, whether it's players, whether it's the parents or carers on the sideline. It could be from anything from, like you say, setting up pitches to maybe even observational tasks or, or, or any other admin or something like that, just trying to almost like create a bit of a community behind the coach, isn't it really? It's just so important. Yeah, no, absolutely. You mentioned in terms of like on match day, like uh, the people on the sideline might see things a little bit differently, just out of interest. Do you have any top tips to maybe help coaches deal with like challenging situations where maybe there is a little bit of a disagreement or it's just a bit of a challenging conversation between a parent that you might have to have at all? Yeah, there's, there's going to be different situations all the time. I think the first thing is that you've always got to keep yourself safe. So don't ever go and have a, a, you know, a conversation that you think could get confrontational or actually, you know, I think sometimes there's a time and a place, but I think sometimes there's also an opportunity and sometimes it's, you feel really uncomfortable doing it, but, but sometimes you almost have to challenge certain, um, I think maybe behaviours. And I say that in terms of if you are able to share as a coach what you're going after. So like, you know, when you talk about sharing those successes, actually, this is what success might look for us today or this season or this is how we're trying to play. Sometimes the more that you share that with those around you, the easier it is then to to challenge them and, and almost remind them and say, well, actually, do you know what? I understand what you're saying, but remember what we're trying to achieve here. So you're frustrated over this, but actually... Um, do you know what? She didn't go and win the ball then, but actually we, we did the next time and we're really happy with that. Or quite often, and, and you know, we, we hear it quite often, you know, when the ball gets passed backwards, oh, why, why are you passing the ball backwards? Well, actually, do you know what? We've passed it backwards, but we've kept the ball and we haven't given it away. So sometimes we almost just need to, you know, we maybe take for granted that as coaches, we know what we're doing, we know why we're doing it, but but not everybody's on that same journey as us. So we've got, almost got to be able to share to be then able to challenge and 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 help them with it and, and I was going to say, get them on board, but but to understand the why. But it goes both ways, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, you've got to share to do that. But also, like I say, you've, you've always got to keep yourself safe. How would you suggest that people try to maintain good well-being? Is there things that you kind of plan into your setup or your planning even for sessions or day to day being really honest it's probably something that I've always struggled with how do you look after yourself the best you can when you're always trying to look after everybody else um I, I do just think it's like say it's about you know keeping that support network around you and, and like I say that might be 
fellow coaches but that actually that might be away from it that might be you know your, your your friendship network or your support network for me it's really important to try and try and make time for for my wider network you know I spend a lot of time away from home and, and I'm you know I'm really privileged to do a job that I love doing but juggling that with then going home and and doing grassroots football um sometimes you just find yourself with no time so I think it's really important to, to try and make the time Sometimes, you know, you can easily get, you know, weeks just turn into months and then it's another season. So trying to make time for the things that are important for you um, because it's, that's going to make you feel good. And if you're feeling good, you're going to be the best version of yourself. So maybe like plan some time in ahead, like if you've got, I don't know, maybe it's a once every two weeks or once a month, if that's all you can give, like at yeah. least if it's in your diary, it's kind of something. It's a commitment, isn't it? Mm. You make it. I've got a, I've got a calendar on my fridge at the moment and it's got uh, different colours on it. So uh, if what my work is all one colour, so if I see the, the calendars all full of one colour, that is not a good place to be. So yeah, I've got work, football, and then a different colour, like for family and friends almost and social things. And it's like I say, it's more of a visual prompt to say, I need to find some time or I need to like adjust some things to make sure I get, try and get that balance as, as best as I can. That's a really good idea, actually. Like that visual thing. Yeah, yeah. It's a visual yeah, reminder. It's there. Yeah. You can't hide from it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a really important message though as well, isn't it? Like in terms of trying to, I suppose it's like every day, like that work-life balance. But of course, in this situation, it's work-life and, and football balance as well. And it, it's trying to do that because it's, trying to find the bits that, you know, really make you, you in terms of, and, and can kind of recharge your battery almost, isn't it? Yeah. We just take it for granted. We think we can just do everything all the time, you know, and just keep going. And, and at some point we can't. Um, and like I say, you'll start to feel it. Like we all know, it, we all know it maybe, you know, if we're a bit tired or yeah, we like, we know it in ourselves. And if we know it, our, people around us will, will start to recognise and know it too. I guess it's even just simple things as well, like trying to get enough sleep and, um, that's one of the big things that people always talk about with, with well-being and drinking plenty of water. <laughs> um, yeah, and just kind of making time for those little things that seem insignificant, but they can make a big difference. Yeah, absolutely. It's just all looking after yourself. And I know it's easier said than done sometimes with, um, you know, workloads and uh, and especially with the amount of time that volunteering uh, in football can actually can actually give but yeah please do kind of think about at least if there's one thing to take away from this podcast is just to kind of think about ways that you can kind of recharge your battery and look after yourself to, to be the best version that that you can be um talking about obviously helping people with with their well-being in, in your role um have you ever find yourself supporting a coach with their own well-being at all yeah naturally i, I think it's a conversation that comes up like quite often now coaches don't have a lot of spare time um and and i think some of the conversations i have are, are you know around you know coaches that really want to go and deliver great sessions and feel like they don't have the time to to put in so and then that affects their well-being because it's like how it makes you feel so probably some of my work is around like how, how do we help coaches with their plan and how can we signpost them to where they can get sessions and content really easy to take the pressure off to say actually do you know what? here's a website or here's england football learning go you know go here get some get some sessions and then you can use it. And then that's what one thing that actually you don't need to worry about. And the, the, like I say, there's always other conversations as well. There's like I say, there's always the challenging conversations. Sometimes there's the, you know, different coaches have different challenges with, with players because all of our players have individual needs. Some of the struggles sometimes around managing difference in sessions, but that's, that can be really tough for coaches. Like I'm really trying my best and I don't feel like I'm giving my players enough. So when we talk about that well-being, it all links. So I think sometimes it's trying to, I could say, have that conversation, find out probably my, what might be causing some of these feelings and almost like taking a few steps back and then almost trying to find some solutions to some of it. And then, like I could say, hopefully then it just starts to take some of the, like the pressure off. But then, like I say, you've almost got to just go and have a try at some stuff, which in itself can be scary. <laughs> Are there any maybe tools or other methods that you would recommend to help coaches stay on top of their mental health? We've had quite a lot of really good advice, but is there anything else that, that coaches could potentially use? I think sometimes it's just just being aware of the, the support around you. And, that, and like I say, that'll be different for everybody. Everybody needs something different. But I think sometimes it's just recognising when you might need some, some help and support. Um, 
whether that's like you know informal for you know friends and having conversations or, or more formal support and um you know sometimes just being brave to take that first step of going actually do you know what i'm not feeling great yeah i think that's the important step isn't it reaching out and just thinking what 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 can i do what support is there to to, to help me um it is a really important step to take and perhaps even just thinking about what that support would look like to kind of take that pressure off um because it might be that some stuff you could keep doing or some stuff feels okay but it's just certain tasks that are maybe a struggle yeah and that support network that's been a big message of this episode really is, is building up that support network maybe it is the fact that if possible i know this is it is might be different for, for each individual but if there are parents or co-coaches or whatever that might be able to help out maybe mm -hmm. take a training session so that it might give you that training session off now and that might be difficult because we all love football and we want to be involved but I'd like to think that that's okay to to do like sometimes you just have to look after yourself and if somebody else can step in and take a take a session or something just to give you a bit of breathing space to recharge and come back um it'd be a nice thing to do yeah I like absolutely and and you know, it's such an important message as well, though, like to our players as well. Sometimes, like we're all human, mm. and yeah, you know, sometimes it's it's all right to not be okay. Yeah, like sometimes we just need a week off. We just need a break, and we say the power of role models of coaches and and the impact that makes on on our players too. Looking back at everything we've discussed throughout, can you summarise the key top tips that you want coaches to take away? Recognise your support network. Um, Take that time to reflect, to reflect and review. That will help you move on. Don't be afraid to probably, you know, sh share things wider. So um, when I say that, I mean around, you know, how can we take the pressure off ourselves sometimes as coaches? So delegate responsibilities, get players involved with with tasks and feedback information. Uh, and likewise, you know, parents or supporters on the side, how can we control the controllables? So, you know, how can you, you plan and prepare as much as you can to take the pressure off of you, you know, in those pinch points. So, you know, on those match days or when you get to training, you know, how can you have everything as ready as you can be? Because I think, say all of those things, just I say take the pressure off a little bit and, and probably make you feel like you're, you're in a better place with, with things. So then, like I say, you can, you can go out and be the best that, that you can be. Brilliant. And then um, just to kind of what we've been doing lately is asking our guests to kind of set a bit of a challenge to listeners whether they're um struggling with their well-being or it's just something that they just want to set into their um their own working pattern i guess what kind of thing would you challenge them to have a go at i guess i'd say my challenge would probably be around do you know who your support network is and i said it earlier actually do you know what like what their motivations are as well so if you you know coach as a group of coaches what are each of your motivations um, and then a step beyond that, actually, if you're if you're struggling to identify who your support network is, I think that's a really great opportunity to probably start to to build to build one and, and make those connections. Um, so yeah, probably that I'd say that would be a, a good challenge to go away and, and think about. Do you have any tips for um, you know if someone doesn't feel like they've got a support network around them, where they might find those people? Yeah, I think probably within you know if, if we've got coaches who are in clubs. Um, naturally that means there's lots of like-minded people in one place uh, and sometimes it's just about finding your people so it's around actually within that club network you know what other roles are there in the club who are your key people who coach and manage different age group who's the coach on the session next to you when you're coaching you know we say it coaching can be quite lonely and isolating sometimes you know we get our training slot we turn up at our slot we've got our kit we set up how often do we talk to the rest of the coaches on the pitch or anyone around us um, because we're almost like we're in our zone. So I think for those who, who actually might not know who their network is, I think there's probably loads of people out there. It's almost just about like finding them and making them your network. Really? Right. Well, we are coming up to the show now, Vicky, and you know what uh, it means now. It is time for our Swift session feature. Yep. So to finish off, we've got a 30 second challenge and we're going to ask you to explain a session idea to us in those 30 seconds are you up for that challenge no problem okay. <laughs> once again when the music starts you can begin well so for me any sessions that involve scoring and stopping goals are the best because everyone loves scoring um so this session is you need a mini pitch so you can have goals or cones it doesn't matter uh, a goal at either end uh, two teams at either end, no more than four players really at each end. And it's all about letting the players choose. 
so they can choose to play 1v1 or 2v2 or 3v3 or 3v1 but it's about giving them ownership and letting them play the game so which is very much what we've been talking about all day like let the players choose perfect lovely straight to time as well yeah. Uh, and yeah what what a nice little uh, session to to be able to take away and yeah give it a go let us know how it gets on in the comments as well well vicky um it's been brilliant talking to you yeah again thank you very much for for giving us your time um hopefully you've enjoyed being on um but it's been a really nice conversation and i know it's a really important topic that maybe doesn't get talked about enough so thank you very much for for sharing your time and your, your thoughts on it today Thank you for having me back. Anytime, anytime. Hopefully you'll be back again. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's all we have time for today. But don't forget to check out the episode description for the transcription of this episode and for all the links to our platforms. There you'll be able to click through to the England football community. And this is where you can post all your coaching questions for us to discuss on the podcast or just simply to connect with loads of wonderful coaches. Yeah, we'd love to help you out with your coaching questions. So please do check it out. We'll be back soon with another episode of CoachCast. So if you haven't already, hit subscribe to make sure you don't miss an episode. From all of us at England Football Learning, thanks for listening.